And a very good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Issues and Attitudes. My name is Jeff Owens, Interim Director at WEIU. On the phone today, joining me is Matt Toon, Tourism Arts Director, Angelia Burgett. Welcome, Angelia. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm good. Uh, you know, it's a, the crazy world we live in. We are still yes, social <laughs> social distancing. She's on the phone, in case anybody is wondering. And we're hoping to have guests return to the studio uh, as we've been working on it lately to get people to us. We have safe distancing in there. So I uh, appreciate you calling in on this Monday. Normally, we would only be talking about all Bagel Fest 2020, uh, but that has been uh, put to rest for this year. So I guess I just want to start. How tough was it? Because that's your baby, I guess. <laughs> to, 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 you know, to talk about uh, not having a bagel fest this year. Well, you know, we started out um, making plans, knowing that there was always this possibility that, that we would have to pull it. Um, and I don't think anybody can predict, you know, going back to the very beginning, nobody could have predicted that we'd be in the middle of summer um, still dealing with this in a, in a pretty active way. And so we made plans and started, I had entertainers lined up and I had, um, you know, the, the things we generally do at the beginning of the year. And then we kind of froze for a little bit, uh, waiting to see what was going to happen. And when we did finally start calling our sponsors and our vendors and our volunteers, uh, the most delightful thing happened. People were like, yes, we want to do whatever we can to get involved. Um, and even though we knew that doing it this year was going to look very different than previous years, people were very very enthusiastic about doing something in the community so we took the approach that this was going to be a celebration that it may not look like our typical event but that it was going to be something the community needed um, and I still I stand by that I still think the community needs um, opportunities to be together especially Matt Toon. I think Matt Toon likes um, community events probably better than anybody and I, I love that about the city and so uh, we started working on that and of course in the um, the timing for um, making all those things happen was kind of interrupted um, with the, the announcement of the phases that the governor uh, put forth, knowing that we were not likely to get to a, a place of a, a vaccination, which obviously we haven't got there yet. And so we had to make the decision. And it was very difficult and very sad. It was one of the worst days in the office um, to call and tell people who were ready to go to say, hey, we're in and tell them we couldn't make it happen. So it was very difficult, okay. very difficult. And we'll get into yeah. next year and stuff as we go forward. But uh, uh, you did get uh, to do the Fourth of July parade. That that did continue this past weekend. Talk about that. Well, you know, it was um, it, it was a delightful day. It was a beautiful day in the morning. So um, that set us up for success right there. But that same sort of feeling that we got from talking about Bagel Fest, people talked about with the parade. They they wanted the minute it was announced, folks are like, we want to be involved. Tell us what we have to do to be within compliance of, of social distancing or guidelines, but we want to be there. And so um, literally within five minutes after I posted it on Facebook, I had three or four phone calls and three or four emails saying, yes, let's do this. And so um, then it just snowballed from there. And we ended up having a parade of normal size, a North of, normal Fourth of July parade. Um, and I know that we were able to keep the social distancing but we didn't it, it didn't miss anything we still had people in their red white and blue and kids carrying flags and so the same feeling was there um but i think it was a little bit heightened because it was one of the few things we were able to do as a community this year so i think there was a a level of in, enthusiasm around it and yeah. it's funny is you know matt Toon is known for doing parades like i think yeah. other communities think we do a lot of parades which maybe we do uh, but we like them. So when yeah. we said we were going to do this, it all of a sudden it was like the best thing that ever happened. Like, we're doing a parade, and we can you believe it? So it's good. It's really good. And, and, and people like to get out. It's tough to tell people to stay home. I think it was easier in March yeah. and April, but now that we're in yeah. the dead of summer, uh, it's tough to kill, keep people at home for sure. Um, Agreed. You were not canceling. You didn't cancel the 4th of July fireworks show. It's been postponed. Is that is that the way to look at it and talk about what, what, yeah, what we hopefully can expect in August? So just a little background, just a reminder, uh, Matt Toon and Charleston partner on the 4th of July. So this was a group decision, um, you know, deciding what was best for the entire county. And so um, we were lucky enough that we could work with our uh, 4th of July vendor, our, our fireworks vendor. Uh, they were basically saying, whatever you want to do, we're up for it. And so uh, we'd hope we'd be able to figure out a way to do it on the 4th. And obviously that didn't happen. But the air show, which we've worked with in years past and um, obviously work at the airport for the normal 4th of July fireworks, we were able to get with them and say, 
can we basically buddy onto your event and make it a whole long day celebration? And they said yes, which was great to hear. And so we moved forward on that. Now, since then, the, the air show has been canceled, and, and not for any other reason than they just have a lot of moving parts, kind of like Bagel Fest, lots of people to coordinate with. Um, and so they did cancel that show, but we're still on for August 29th. And it'll be the normal, at, at the best, to the best of our knowledge, there will be some things we have to do differently. Um, we're still working on that plan with the health department, but it'll be, in terms of the setup, the same show. Now, if you want to save money, you really don't need to do one because if you were in Mattoon Friday and Saturday night, <laughs> the, the people of our community, and I, don't, I can only speak for where I sleep at night, uh, put on yeah. one whale of a show. As I have to tell you, I saw some of that, too. <laughs> <laughs> I, it, it was, it's one of those things where I think it was important um, in, the, in the consideration of doing it is the way we do that show with so many people in a, a large space is to our advantage. But it also um, doesn't set us up necessarily to do the same event with the guidelines. So it was it was one of the things where we went back and forth on it, and I, I feel really good about having something to look forward to next month. Yeah, and so, uh, hopefully so. That looks yep. good. Um, now, obviously, the other big question is with so many cancellations, and I should say there is a little bit of breaking news. I don't know if you've heard Broomcorn just announced that their festival has been canceled uh, for the... I did not hear that. Yeah, yeah. it just came out just a, right before yeah. we went on the air, so Broomcorn 2020 has been canceled. Also, bad news in country music, Charlie Daniels died just right before we went to air, so... Yeah, there's a little yeah. Bit of, a little, yeah, it is, so... But, and this is kind of goes along with that, is, you know, is how big of a hit does the city and tourism take when there's no bagel fest and there's um, you know no no local sporting events can host the, for the rest of the summer? Talk about the financial aspect of it. Well, you know it's still a little early to say exactly the dollars we're going to miss um, to the to the dollar number, but we certainly um, I know that not just us but our our local economy is taking enormous hit the the restaurants and. You know, all the retail that benefits from all those people, and obviously the hotels um, are the, the center point of all that. Um, it's going to be very challenging. And for us in particular, the city of Mattoon, we really, we really thrive on what happens between April and September, and you know that. And yeah. so you know, when we lost um, IH, IHSA events in May, and then we've lost all of our summer events, um, it's going to be a very difficult 2021 going into that. And, let, and, and hopefully we'll be able to recoup, um, you know, back getting into the, the swing of things. But um, it's going to really affect the way we're able to support grants and the way we're able to move forward. Still so much unknown at this point. Hey, good answer. Um, yeah. If you had to say right now, when you, you look at this pandemic being in its, what, fourth month, fifth month, what have you learned the most so far? What, or, or is something that just, you're just wowed by the fact that you've seen or heard? Well, you know, that's a really good question. That's a really good question. One of the things I find the most interesting um, is kind of going back to what I said about Bagel Fest, is how interested people are in supporting something, even when things are down. You know, when we, we knew that we were not going to get all the sponsors back this year because some of our um, businesses and, and folks would be really struggling to get the money together to be a sponsor, even if it was valuable to them. So uh, what I loved was that that the people who could say yes said yes immediately and so what i really value is looking at the way people value this community what they value getting together and that there's um something special about that in my opinion so i would say that's one of the things that that really i don't know it's like it's like looking at the small things as being the most important things in our, our community I, I like that and the parade was a really good example of that as well you know it's it was a People valued that moment of being able to be out, first of all, to show their patriotism, but also to be able to be out and, and to gather. So, yeah, that's probably been it. When you look towards, you know, uh, if we continue with, uh, and Illinois is doing well, knock on wood, compared to some of the other states in the country. As we continue to move forward, are, are there follow-up events, either tourism or Arts Council, on the on the docket that you, quote-unquote, still want to have if, if everything works well? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we have, with the arts in particular, um, we did miss out on a couple things over the, you know, the spring and yeah. summer for the arts. It did not take as hard a hit so far. Because um, a lot of the events that the arts hold in Mattoon are able, were able to manage that 50 um, g gathering number. So we have a photography show coming um, in the fall. We have a ukulele workshop coming in, the, in uh, late, early winter. And then we have... Um, 
an art show coming in the spring. And then I expect fully that we will see enormous support for our trunk or treat for our um, Christmas celebration downtown. Uh, the things that are happening downtown, Celebrate Downtown stuff was really successful anyway, but now that people have been without that in, for the you know few months we've been doing this, I think they'll be really ready to come out and, and participate. So the fall and winter look to be very strong as far as community events goes. Now, do you, do you, I assume that you plan for worst and best case scenarios if things start to go downhill? Yeah, I mean, we, we did some of the rescheduling. Um, you know, the, the one good thing, if we stay in this phase, which I hope that we do, um, we can manage that 50 number in some categories. And then if you're outside and you can gather in small groups, you know, kind of like we did with the parade, then we're able to manage that as well. Um, I think that there's a, a certain level of willingness to do whatever's necessary, wear the gloves, wear the mask, whatever, if it means they can get out. There you go. So folks are ready to do that. One of the questions that's come up, and, and I, I don't know if I'm putting you on the spot here, but with this 50-person limit in these areas, does that mean that, what's the distance between groups of 50 people? So if 50 people are in front of the train station, can another 50 people be over at D to Z Sports looking at something? Or have you, have you studied that, or do you know what, what the rules that's are? That's my understanding. That's my understanding, my interpretation of it, okay. um, because we're able to do, you know, it was slightly different in the parade sense because we had folks with their families. Yeah. So we didn't really have gatherings of 50 particularly. I mean, we could have, but it was more like, you know, five or ten people would be in a group of people they either live with or have close contact with already. And then, the you know what I mean, it was more like that. But my understanding is as long as there is at least that six-foot distance between the groups, you're fine. Okay. Now, that, that may be, six foot may not be the right number, but it's, you know, it's a reasonable number in between groups. Okay. I know this is a challenge that they're having in the hotel industry, talking about meetings coming back, is what can you do in a capacity, let's say like a hotel that has a conference center that can, can seat a thousand people, what can you reasonably get in that space and so everybody's, you know, in, within guidelines. So, that's still a question to be answered, I think. Since there's so many things are up in the air, have you are you taking ideas for other events, or have you kind of done a brainstorm with other ideas? I so am always taking ideas for other events. But does anything uh, sound is, cool for the future, or anything you can tease well, us with? Well, one of the things I absolutely think has to happen, um, just one of the learning curves here, is that any time we could do something that has an online component to it, we should be prepared to do that regardless of the, the guidelines. So, you know, for example, and that, that really suits the arts more than anything, you know, if we're able to have something or we can have an online exhibit or something like that, we should add that to our uh, uh, skill set. And up to this point, we've not been doing that because it just hasn't been on our radar. Uh, but we absolutely need to do that. The other thing, and this is, this is maybe a teaser, um, I think it's important for us to really focus on our, our restaurants and our retail. And, uh, and I, of course, my heart's in downtown because that's where I'm at most of the time making sure that those guys get enough attention. Um, some, of our, some of our local restaurants, our mom-and-pop shops, are excellent at Facebook and social media, some not so much. And so in order to sort of help them, you know, get the information out that, yes, they're open or, yes, they're doing business curbside or they have, you know, limited capacity, but they're doing it, I think it's important to support them as much as possible. So, you know, that's, that's been part of our work, and I think we'll probably develop that more into the event category. I was going to ask you about social media. It seems like social media has been the one thing during this pandemic that's been either the good or the bad because the bad is everybody has an opinion on everything. But the good is you can get information out immediately about things that are happening. So do you work with like the chamber and to, to help some of these businesses or what's your role in that? Well, you know, the chamber is primarily working for their members, but I also think that they've shifted um, to a larger, I would say a broader um, scope in terms of what's happening in the city. Um, both Charleston and Matching Chambers have been very active during this time. And so my part is I do uh, a weekly email that goes out about events. And obviously that's, it's like it's information. There's information there because, for example, we have a farmer's market on Friday and we've uh, got the Lunch and Music Series in Heritage Park going on right now on Fridays from 11.30 to 1. And so I am anxious to put out everything we possibly can. But what I've been trying to add into that is let's look at the positive things that are happening in spite of all of this that's happening that is disappointing um we've got you know we have a new bike trail between matt yep. and charleston that's right. paved now and and it makes my heart happy to see the construction we have going on 
seems like everywhere, um, in addition to one of my greatest um, things to look at is the hotel that's developing and conference center developing um, on Route 16. And so you look at those things and you think, okay, this, this, this period cannot last forever. So what can we do to focus on what's going right and how are people helping each other and how are people supporting each other's uh, businesses and that kind of thing. So that's been the focus for me as much as I can. What about the, when you're out there and talking to people? What, what are you asked the most? Well, funny enough, or maybe maybe not funny enough, is do I have anything to do right now? <laughs> <laughs> which, which, of course, there's it, it is a reframing of what what this office needs to do. But um, it's a funny lesson learned is that canceling things is not as easy as it sounds. <laughs> you know, there's, there's lots of ways. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. and rescheduling for next year and all kinds of things. Um, and, and I just as a side note, fortunately for us, we didn't lose any revenue from um, from our our canceling a bagel fest because we were able to to work with our our distributors for our entertainment but so anyway there's a lot of work that has to be done to make sure that we are prepared for the next stage um so canceling things preparing for next year um has been a, a bit real priority the other thing i think um has been frustrating for a lot of people and i i totally understand this is watching things that they value not be open or um, be canceled and you know so there's been a lot of conversation about you know nobody wants to cancel anything you know nobody wants to spend all their time working on something um or work on opening something like a pool and then all of a sudden you know those the opportunities taken away from you outside of any other circumstance that you've had any control over so there's that and i think there's a lot of talk about you know maybe they should have done this maybe we should have done that you know, we're all just doing the best we can. So oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was, it, topic. And some people went early and some people, you know, waited. And I get it. it it's tough. Yeah. I mean, we've never... It's very tough. Our generation, at least, has never experienced anything like what we're going through right now. Um, right. You know I'm going to ask you this. Um, Bagel Fest 2021, yes. talk about game plans. Is it going to be the same? Will it look different? Or is it too way too early? Um, any changes? You know, I know that from a, from a large, broad um, plan, it will look the same. Um, in terms of the details, when we get in there, it's going to be it's going to be so dependent on what's going on in our world at that time. Um, I can tell you that one of the things that we find the most valuable is um, the music and the food. And so, when it, whatever we have to do, we know we're going to have music and food. That's that's what people are coming for. And so, what that looks like exactly is so hard to say. But I feel like it's it's important, and it's been you know, reveal to us how important it is to the community to have something. So we'll make it work. There you go. Now, I posted this a couple of weeks ago. I didn't get any response. I'm going to ask you because you're involved. You get some, a little bit involved. The world's biggest bagel oven sits out there in front yeah. of, I don't know what the name of the business is. They change all the time. It's, uh, what is it now? Bim Bimbo is the name of the, yeah, the company. Uh, yeah. it, the, the, the world's biggest bagel oven is falling apart. It's not looking as good as it used to. Is anybody, does anybody care but me, I guess would be the question, or is there any thought to... <laughs> I care. I, you know, it, it's interesting, um, in the time that I've been doing this, this has been a long time, sort of the ebb and flow of the, the way their company has changed has, you know, from year to year, it's different in terms of how much emphasis they put on the on bagel now, I know it's less and less, but I just, you know, yeah. that thing sits well, out there and it's a landmark and... It's, it's not necessarily less and less. Honestly, surprisingly, it's it's up and down. Like oh, there's okay. some years there's a lot of engagement and some years there's not. So I think for them, um, I don't know if we need to go back and try again. Because we've talked about we should have another attempt at, at a Guinness Book World Record again. And, um, you know, we have to have the right players in place. And we, right now um, it's a new set of folks that we need to talk to. Okay. That's a good answer. Okay. <laughs> I don't think you answered my question, but that's all right. I don't know if I did or not. <laughs> I care. Hey, that was, that was a go. real question. I now, care. Are you working all in office, or did you get to stay home, or what was? You, what, how did you spend the last few months? Well, the uh, in the beginning, I was um, I was here. I was not at the office a lot, kind of back and forth. Um, but but now I'm full time in the office. It's um, it, it's there's there's a lot to be done within the office that just can't be done at home, which. In the beginning, I, there was a lot to do, lots of phone calls and emails and that kind of thing, but that's kind of slowed down a little bit from the cancellations. So, yeah, I'm in office. Have you talked to the hotel motel owners and managers, had conversations about how they're doing and what they're doing to try to, to survive this uh, pandemic summer of 2020? You know, it's 
it's one of those conversations that's kind of, I don't know, it's, it's a little bit discouraging on one hand because obviously right now there's not a lot of stays. Um, but then the conversation flips to, I think everybody is trying very hard to be optimistic that this is a short-term problem. Um, and, and hopefully the strength of the hotels, and I think we have some really strong um, owner-operators and, and GMs that are making it work, doing the best they can. And so there's hope. So that, I think that's the theme, is there's hope that this will not last forever. Does the tourism, uh, how much involved are you, are the Lake Mattoon, are you, does tourism have anything to do with Lake Mattoon, or are you, are you? No. Okay. I said not, no, not a lot. I just said, no, the, is the beach open, or is it closed, is still Lake Mattoon, or do you know? I believe it's open. I, I know that there are, there's activity happening out there in terms of um, boating, and I don't, I, I believe you can go to the beach, but. Don't quote me on that. I'm not entirely <laughs> sure. Because it's one of those things where I have contact with them in terms of events. Um, we have great partnerships with, like, the, the Wi-Fi or Regatta. They have, yeah. um, they have a great event out there every year. And so we have a relationship with them, but I don't have a relationship with the management of it. Okay. Now, when you talk about Bagel Fest and, you know, the acts that were scheduled to play in 2020, will you try to renew them for 2021, or do they not know yet, or what's the... I, I know it, it, it just kind of all came out when it got canceled. Yeah, you know, the... Um the one group that I'm, I am working diligently to get back, um, and we haven't re-signed contracts or anything like that, is we did have Resurrection, the Journey Tribute Band, scheduled for Saturday night of this year. And I feel like they are someone, they are a group that was so well-received when they came and when there was such buzz about them after they left, um, to bring them back again was a great idea. So it's my hope to bring them back to close out the weekend. You want to bring back year. Resurrection? There's some irony there. I know. <laughs> well, or, or is that just the way it should be? Yeah, it should um, be. So, but they're so much fun, and, you know, I'm I'm an 80s girl, and there's just, just a, nobody that I ever talked to that isn't interested in, like, journey music. So it's one of those things that I, I just think it's more of a, it's like a party atmosphere. Yeah. It's like, you know, so I, I'm hoping to bring them back. I know that um, once they were here, they started becoming more and more successful because they are that good. But they were ready to come back to Mattoon because they felt like that was an important place. You know what I mean? Kind of a stepping off point for them in a, in a way. And David Lee so, Murphy was the scheduled country act, correct? Yes, he is. And so he's, um, I don't know how that's going to work yet. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, other things that are, you talked a little bit about the bike path. How excited were you that this is la this next phase has just it had been as completed and people are raving about it already? Oh, yeah. People are so excited about it, and it, it looks beautiful. And what's really interesting is that at some point, um, way back in the very beginning of these conversations, and it was Charleston and Matt Tune together talking about what else do we need out there? Should we have uh, a contribution of tourism out there in terms of information and signs and art and all those kinds of things? So for me, it kind of like, okay, now that we've done this, let's rethink what we're going to do next so where we get more involved and it's um, you know, that next layer so um yeah it, it's and it's beautiful and the feedback you know once again talking about people be looking for those bright spots in the community people are very happy that's cool so, it's really good what about wall murals and uh any update on that what what's going to happen next? yeah I, it's, it's, I i'm glad you asked that question so we had originally um we did hire a muralist um to start working on what we call a parachute cloth which means they can work on it at home um, and then they can come and assemble it. And so we have this very large wall uh, across from the depot that is uh, prepared and ready to go. And so he's been working on that. And um, he's coming from Philadelphia. This is a the, the last mural that is a part of the Lumpkin Family Foundation mural project with the Arts Council. So um, we're going out big because this wall is huge. Yeah, it's big. Uh, so this, the muralist is coming uh, mid-August. And what he'll do is he'll start assembling that so he'll come with a lot of work already done um and so i would expect before we get into winter we've got a completed beautiful mural there and it's um it's really going to add to what i think is already a really you know everything downtown in that one little section here by the depot and by the murals and heritage park is just it it just it looks transformed so. you'll, see, and you'll see that a lot from where you're at <laughs> oh, absolutely. Well, I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled yeah. about it. So, yeah. yeah. The, YMCA is also, the YMCA is also doing a lot of stuff having uh, events down there open again. So that also helps, uh, like you said, the positivity <laughs> of Midtown and Downtown Mattoon. They are, um, they are doing a run for the bagel virtually this year. 
So on Saturday, that would be normally be Bagel Fest, they're going to be having their event. And obviously that looks um, wildly different than a normal event, but it's something I think that runners are excited about having an opportunity to do. There you go. Um, and additionally, though, that same day, we are going to have a drive through bagel breakfast at Peterson Park. Oh, really? So you can just drive through, get your bagel, get your, um, we're going to have some save-the-day cards so you'll know what to look for next year. And um, people can, you know, it's a, it's a little minor, minor celebration, but once again, it's that point of light we're looking for. That's good. I didn't hear about that. So that's, what yeah, day is that again? Yeah. That's the 27th? That's going to be the 18th. 18th, okay. 18th. Yeah, so you'll be able to drive through Peterson Park and get your bagel and, and head on to wherever you're going. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. A couple minutes left with Angela Burgett from uh, Mattoon Tourism Arts and Arts Director. Anything that uh, I have forgotten to ask about what's going on in the city of Mattoon before we uh, ask the unrelated eight questions? Okay. Um, I would just re just remind folks that downtown we have uh, on Fridays, we, and we've been doing this for several years, but glad to bring this back this year, sponsored by... Uh, Mattoon Arts Council and Mattoon Tourism. We're doing the music in the park. So in Heritage Park, from 11:30 to 1 each Friday, there'll be a local entertainer. Um, come out with your lawn chairs, your lunch, if you want to get it downtown, and and just be able to socially distance because it's a pretty big park, but also be able to be a part of an event downtown. So and obviously that's that's the important thing. We're there together. You. Cool. All right, unrelated end. I know you love these. I do love them. <laughs> Your favorite subject in grade school? English. English. Who likes English? I don't think English? I it English. Probably. Writing. Oh. Well, okay. I'm a writer by nature. There you go. So. First thing you're going to do when this pandemic is over is? You know, have a really big event. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. Who's your all-time favorite boss? Oh, now you're going to get me in trouble. I, I know. That's my goal. Um, um, you know, I, I should a little shout out to Rick Hall because okay. Rick Hall right now is my commissioner and, um, he's been my commissioner for several years and I think he, um, I think we have, we have built a really strong relationship in terms of tourism and art. So I want to say Rick Hall. All right. Favorite thing to cook. Ooh, that's good. So you should have asked me what I'm really, what really is good, <laughs> but, um, I am a master at making soup of a million different kinds, but that's my go-to in the winter. There's always a pot of soup in the fridge. Have you ever been to Mount Rushmore? I have not, but I'd like to go. I would, too. Um, favorite patriotic song since we're coming off the fourth weekend? Oh, a little Lee Greenwood. I don't know. I mean, that just gets you every time, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. So, yeah. Someone would just describe your leadership style as? Um... I think hands off. I'm pretty. Tr I, I I give some direction and then I I walk away. All right. So I don't know if that's a. There's probably a word for that that I I could have come up with, but off the top of my head, that's what I'll say. We thank you so much. Have a great day, Angelia. Thank you. Bye bye.